This week on the Spotlight, we go to Jackson Lansing, and the crew and others talk about the Bears. The Bears, who had some battles against the Saints, did some good things, and some not so good. And then we go for our final installment of White Sox, talking to a veteran player who we hope is back next year. And we talk to a manager, and he hopes he's back next year. Check out my website, Benkowski.com, for my weekly article and up-to-the-minute trivia sites. From wherever Chicago sports teams are making news, it's the 25th year of the Sports Spotlight. Flowers for every imaginable occasion at Lansing Floral Shop. Call them at 708-474-1212. They deliver. You've got to get to Jack Desmond's Irish Pub for Benkowski Trivia coming up Wednesday, October 16th, and again on the 30th at 8 p.m. Maybe you throw a costume on for the 30th. $10 domestic buckets on Wednesdays. It's at 10339 South Ridgeland. Be there. Want to get a haircut from a great hairstylist? Call mine, Rose Marillo, 312-726-2201. With a 30-year Southwest Side tradition, Huckfin is open 24 hours to serve you with great breakfasts like the Becky Thatcher, soups, great lunches, one-third pound burgers, clubs, and much more. Dinners from seafood to steaks to pasta, great donuts, and ice creams. With three locations at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero, stop in today. You know Huckfin is open. Demitas Coffee Shop, a great place to go at 1066 West Taylor, right off the UIC campus next to the Italian Ice Shop. Breakfast, lunches, mochas, lattes, cappuccino, tea, baked goods, superb French toast, great chicken salad that I love. They're open Tuesday through Sunday. you got to check out Demitas. And you got to check out Dave McLean Antiques. Open 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. six days a week. Always buying and selling quality antiques, art, silver, coins, vintage bicycles, great wholesale prices, and dealers are welcome. 2716 West 111th Street, right between Kedzie and Western, Dave McLean Antiques. Sam and Sons Jewelers. They have custom-made jewelry, and they buy, sell, trade, and repair the jewelry you have. Certified loose diamonds and gemstones, easy to reach at 10640 South Cicero. Sam and Sons Jewelers, they do great things at 10640 South Cicero. Go play at Red Shoes Billiards, 12009 South Pulaski in Alsa, featuring 16 Brunswick Gold Crown pool tables, drop fluorescent lighting fixtures, and the fabulous grade of cloth. Call 708-388-3700 and now video gaming is available at Red Shoes from open till close. And, don't forget, the Illinois Lottery 2. That's Red Shoe Billiards, 12009 South Pulaski. Two Saints drives stalled, and so the Bears got away, trailing 6 to nothing after one quarter. So we're after one quarter. It could be a lot worse. Uh, a touchdown would give the Bears the lead. Let's talk to the crew, though. They're, they're making everything happen here. They're making the drinks. They're setting up the food. Tell everybody your name and what you're doing so far today. I'm Liz. I'm the bartender, and I've been helping set up the food also. That's cool. And describe uh, the, the way the Bears crowd goes here. Uh, they're a little quiet so far today. Yeah, just a little bit. A little more drinks. Maybe touchdown. That might help. <laughs> drinks and a touchdown. That's a good formula. Okay, tell everybody who you are and uh, why you like to work here on Sunday. Uh, my name is Miranda. I'm a bartender here, and I like to work here on Sundays because the Bears fans are just freaking crazy. They're awesome. They're like they're so. No I've never seen football fans like that before. Like any other fan, like they're nothing compared to a Bears fan. They're the most obnoxious group of people I've ever met, and it's fun. And in, in a good way. That's obnoxious in a good way. And what about when they start arguing with their? Uh, Viking and Packer fans. I'm sure you see a little bit of that. Oh, I'm a Vikings fan, so I, I get into it with the Bears fans, and it's a rowdy time. It is. <laughs> but it, in an interesting way, because she likes her tips, she's wearing Bears clothing. So uh, smart girls wearing the appropriate stuff uh, come over here, uh, have a, a couple of cocktails, some snacks, and um, we're looking for a Bears win today. More sports fans here at Jack's. 
Uh, tell us your name and that beautiful jersey that we, we share. Hi, twin. My name's Mark Baldino from uh, Chicago. Just like to give a shout out to all the service people across the world. Sorry they can't watch the game and go Bears. That's cool. Hey, what are you enjoying? Uh, looks like you got a nice plate over there. Yeah, we uh, knocked out a few of these wings there, and we're going to wait to halftime and have the nice buffet they got set up. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's very cool. That's, I, I, I like that kind of appetite where, you know, you could come in and kind of like try to wait it out till halftime, but you couldn't wait it out. I couldn't wait it out the first five minutes, so I had to have some wings. That's, that's very hearty of you. Now, uh, how come the Bears' offense is kind of stagnant here? What's going on? They, they started out bad, and it's just getting progressively worse. But uh, there's a lot of time left in this ball game. Maybe we can uh, come back. Yeah, when you're not even down a full touchdown, and you got to give the defense credit for holding them to the two field goals, I think. Yeah, absolutely. They had the ball inside the red zone a couple times, and they hold them to a field goal. So we got a chance. All right, one touchdown from taking the lead. We're not panicking yet, are we? Not yet. Not All yet. right, that's because we're sweetness. Sweetness. <laughs> Second quarter, Jay Cutler finds Alshon Jeffrey for the score. Jeffrey, 218 yards receiving, the greatest in Bears history, but they were still down 20 to 7 at the half. We're at halftime, and I wondered about why Jack's Bar made this selection of this game, and now it's all clear to me because Lindsay nudged it and said, pick the Saints game, because she loves the Saints, and she's wearing Saints clothing, and I, why are you liking the Saints? You know what? When I went down to Louisiana to go see my mom's side of the family, I just love the culture of it. I love the fans. I love the energy. It's just so much different down there, and that's when I became a Saints fan from being down there, and now I just enjoy watching a winning team and having a good time. And did you go to the same school as Pierre Thomas? I did, TF South, yeah. Yeah, okay, so there's this connection. And uh, we work together on Tuesday nights. You ought to come down and play some trivia. Tell them about that. Trivia is every Tuesday, starts at 7. Me and Pat are pretty much the entertainment. We have a good time. Um, fun questions, great people to be around. It's always a good time. We've been doing it now together for three years here for us, and it's always a really, really fun time. You should really come out and check it on Tuesday nights. Well spoken. And now for a dissenting view, from the Chicago Bears' point of view, we go to Daddy Shell, who is the music director of the Jukebox on Tuesday night. And uh, Bobby, what's going on? Uh, nothing. Good to see you again, as always. A uh, couple years now we've been doing this, and I appreciate you uh, letting me get some air time because uh, I don't get it at home. So. <laughs> yeah, you got a lot of women in your house. Well, you can see what, what goes on in my uh, casa. So anyway, um, the Bears are uh, slow on offense. Not too bad on defense, but uh, they got to start getting the ball downfield. I don't know. It's like they're afraid for some reason, uh, and they're just trying to feel everything out and don't want to make a mistake. However, the same token, with these big tight ends and that, they're moving the ball with the Saints, and if we get down one or two uh, touchdowns, it's, it's going to be hard to come back on these guys. Yeah, so it's time, third quarter, big quarter, big quarter. You know, put the big boy pants on and uh, just smash mouth. I, it worked in the past, and let's do it again. All right, now, Bobby's big on music, so i got to throw him a music trivia question. Completely off the cuff. Put me on the spot. A completely off the cuff. I'm putting myself on the spot, too. I'm going, uh, in the mid-'70s, Disco Lady. Oh, God, uh, John. It's a John. Yeah, I know. Very simple last name. It's a profession. It's Johnny. It's a profession where you sew the pants. Does that help Johnny you? Taylor. Ah! I, I don't normally give clues that big, but uh, he's a special guy. Take it from a guy who's ripped his pants, <laughs> believe me. I, I, know the, I know the drill. All right, we'll have more in the third quarter, maybe better news. Sorry, Saint. <laughs> Since 1967, El Jardin has been serving the finest Mexican food. Before, after, during ball games, located conveniently just three blocks south of Wrigley Field, 3335 North Clark. Whether there's a game or not, you still get hungry, and El Jardin has great service, great food, and great drinks. I've enjoyed every meal I've had there, and you will too. So get to El Jardin for great Mexican food at 3335 North Clark Street in Chicago. You'll be glad you did. 
you've got to get to Kelly's Tavern. You'll have a good time. I'm cracking up thinking about it. Benkowski Trivia, 44th and Wallace, October 11th, and the Halloween Bash on October 25th. Come out and play. Bring your friends. It's fun. Kelly's Tavern, 44th and Wallace. See you over there. Cornelio's Mobile Auto Glass. They come to you. You call them at 773-908-6081. Lowest prices, new and used. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. They'll do your windshield, back window, or sides. They did a great job for me. They'll do a great job for you. And you'll be amazed at how quickly they come in and finish it up. Cornelio's Mobile Auto Glass. For a great meal, get to Amelia's Bar and Grill. Open for lunch and dinner daily, private parties and catering, a unique mixture of fine dining and Mexican specialties brought to you by the great chef Eusebio Garcia. They're at 46th and Halsted. I've had great meals there, and you will too. Amelia's Bar and Grill, 46th and Halsted. Elshon Jeffrey was excellent, but the third quarter traded field goals, 23-10 Saints. We're through three quarters. It's been some tough going. Uh, the Bears still have a chance. And we're talking to some of our favorite outspoken folks of uh, the Bar Jacks, the Scolaris. And um, reintroduce yourself and say what's on your mind today. Uh, Mike Scolari, um, I think that ultimately that they're losing the game in the trenches. The line is not doing what they need to do to, to hang on to the football. You can't give Drew Brees all that time with the football and expect to not have him score a lot of points. And if you can't run the football, you're going to be having a rough day against them. Yeah, I totally agree with you on the lack of pressure. And, uh, yeah, the running is a little iffy. It seems predictable on the few times they do run the ball. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, if you can't run the ball directly, then maybe, you know, try to get, you know, Forte some swing passes. I thought from the beginning, if Forte has a good day, the Bears will have a good chance. And they're just not getting the ball enough. Yeah, they can get him out in space. Um, it, it, it seems like they start games really poorly that, you know, there was a turnover early and a sack early. They just they can't get out of the gate. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't know if that's a lack of preparation or, or how, do you, how do you explain that. I mean, they've finished strong, and that's been good, but you can only dig a hole so deep before you lose, like they did against Detroit last week. You, you just can't get away with that. Yeah. Well, we got some, uh, some more of your family talking about things. Uh, let's see what uh, Joyce has up her sleeve. Uh, let's let's show your sign to the, and and why don't you uh, read it? Well, it says, "Who did? Who did? They ain't nothing. It's right, bitches, bears." Brandon Marshall's fourth quarter touchdown and the two-point conversion made it twenty-six eighteen, but the management of time was not good at the end. <laughs> Threw a pass to Alshon Jeffrey, and then time expired before they could even throw a hail mary. There was a critical drop by Earl Bennett that could have extended a drive that could have been very, very important. And then uh, in trying to get the ball back from the Saints, both Lance Briggs and Corey Wooten jumped off sides to preserve New Orleans ball control. And these mistakes end up critical in a game that you fall behind by that extent. The Saints scored at will early, and the Bears struggled offensively early, and despite uh, their one nice clutch score in the fourth quarter. It's another too little, too late. The Bears need to be better offensively early in games and need to clamp down better defensively early in games. So they find themselves at 3-2, and two, still with a shot at the playoffs, but needing to correct some things quickly, very quickly, because they will find themselves on the outside looking in if they don't. With a 30 year Southwest Side tradition, Huck Finn is open 24 hours to serve you with great breakfasts like the Becky Thatcher, soups, great lunches, one third pound burgers, clubs, and much more. Dinners from seafood to steaks to pasta, great donuts, and ice creams. With three locations at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski and 105th and Cicero, Stop in today. You know Huck Finn is open. You've got to get to Lansing Floral Shop. Open at 8 a.m. daily. Besides a great array of live flowers, they have custom silks, 
Bridgewater Candles, they want you to plan your parties early at a wide delivery area. They're located at 3420 Ridge Road in Lansing, or you can call 708-474-1212. Weddings, funerals, birthdays, anniversaries, and guys, try the No Reason Flower. Believe me, it works. Lansing Floral Shop, give them a call, 708-474-1212. Little Frank's Pizzeria and Bar, Thursday, Buck 50 Miller Old Style. And of course, my trivia games alternate Thursdays, the next one, October 10th, 8 p.m. You know they have $12 large pizza and pitcher all day, every day? Easy to reach at 79th and Narragansett. Check out Little Frank's. You'll be glad you did. Perfect Pitch Auto Repair at 108th and Kedzie. Does tune-ups, transmission, AC service, engine repair, tire repair, oil changes, and emission system repair. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And they've done a great job for me. Perfect Pitch Auto Repair at 108th and Kedzie. We're back on the spotlight. White Sox and Cubs baseball is over. Thank God. And I thought the best entree to talking to a player in the final days was to mention football. And so that's how I approached relief pitcher Matt Lindstrom. And interestingly, he responded quite well. We segued back into baseball, fortunately, I guess. And so we have this discussion that uh, talks about a couple, couple of different topics. But Matt Lindstrom was a solid veteran presence in the bullpen this year. And uh, it would be a great thing if he comes back. And, uh, and he'll talk about that and something he wants to add to his repertoire for 2014. Baseball-wise, you, you've faced uh, all the premier teams in your league. And uh, it looks like Boston will have the home advantage uh, most of the time. Uh, does, does that give them a huge edge, or do you have a sleeper to come out of the American League playoffs? Well, I think it gives them an edge just because of their fan base, um, you know, and the team that they've assembled. But uh, I kind of like Oakland. I kind of like what they're doing over there. Um, they're a scrappy bunch, and they got uh, a lot of good young pitching. So it should be exciting to see. Yeah, they don't, they don't have the big-name thumpers, but uh, they're effective, and they, they, they seem to be the kind of, well, as a pitcher maybe even, they hang around in counts, and they, 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 they really battle you. Yeah, they do. I mean, uh, a lot of their players are guys that they've uh, kind of taken from other teams. Um, maybe there wasn't a spot for them or something like that, and a lot of them are hungry and have something to prove, so I think that that's kind of attributed to their success as well. Okay, and uh, I guess we'll segue into football now uh, as we have different favorites in the uh, NFC North, and uh, you uh, mentioned uh, the, the Vikings, didn't you? I like the Vikings just because, uh, like my ancestors, you know, are, are Swedish. Swedish. Um, a lot of them come from Minnesota, but uh, you know, playing here in Chicago, I've kind of transitioned over the Bears a little bit, just because I know, don't know Jay Cutler personally, but uh, I got to see him and uh, talk to him a little bit out in out in Denver when I lived out there. He was playing for the Broncos, so kind of a, a Bears fan now, and just unfortunate that the Vikings are so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's funny how things turn. You're a playoff team one year, and I mean, I was just talking to Harold Baines about the Ravens. He's from the Baltimore area, and here's a team that, uh, you know, won the Super Bowl and then had a very rough start. Uh, I don't know. It, it, in fact, if I can make the analogy to the White Sox, this was a team that was in first place four months last year. Mm -hmm. um, it's very elusive, the winning formula, isn't it? It's weird, uh, especially, you know, some players uh, go to other teams and, uh, you know, the right chemistry means a lot actually in, in uh, professional sports especially when you're grinding through with each other uh, over the course of eight months really so I'm not saying that we didn't have the right personal in here but uh, you know it's just it's funny because you know Baltimore wasn't able to retain some of their free agent guys they lost some of their key players and you know they still got a long season to go but uh, you know it's, it's weird how sports is like that sometimes well I'm kind of glad we're staying on this baseball topic because uh, when you were brought in as a veteran presence uh, you know, it, it looked to be a stabilizing force for the bullpen. Some of your veteran players were shipped out, mm -hmm. but now you got this influx of new young guys again, and, and that seems to be energizing in a way. I'm thinking of the Garcias on offense, mm -hmm. and you got a couple of new pitchers, uh, you know, Johnson among them, and, uh, you know, they seem to be impactful already. Well, I think that's uh, the biggest thing as far as uh, turning our season around next year. You know, younger players getting an opportunity to prove themselves in the big leagues needing some experience and usually sometimes they're blocked by veteran players or something like that but uh, you know they just need a chance to get their feet wet and 
and uh, they kind of know what to expect at the big league level and stuff like that. So I think that has, uh, that has force and that pulls weight a little bit with what's going on. And I think a lot of the guys in the clubhouse here will uh, do something next year for the White Sox. And, you know, I think it'll just make them much, that much more prepared. In the last couple of weeks, as you prepare to enter a game and early innings, middle innings, you're watching the team play. And What are you seeing about the, the, the new twist on the offense? I mean, I like it. Just uh, I see what the Garcias and some of these other guys, Simeon, you know, they're young and they're still really good players, though. They, they uh, inject a lot of speed into our offense, um, going first to third a little bit better and stuff like that. So just uh, that's, what, that's what every team needs. They need young, hungry players that want to prove themselves and make an impact on the game. And I think that we'll see that a lot next year, too. And one of those young, hungry players is, is Addison Reed, who's certainly made the most of, you know, his opportunities. And when you consider that he's saved, you know, two-thirds of your team's wins, uh, it, it must be a pleasure to go out and, and set it up for him. Yeah, it's nice. Um, especially, you know, him getting that opportunity to close at such a young age. Um, you know, he's, he's earned it, and, you know, he's running with his opportunity, and hopefully he can continue to, continue to do that next year as well. But, uh, you know, he's, he's got the right mentality to go about things, so we like that. And, you know, from your end, you, know, you, you and Nate, you know, seem to be the primary guys to, to handle those seventh and eighth, you know. Keep doing what you did. You know, you don't want to change anything from this year, I don't think, do you? I mean, uh, probably throw some more change ups to the lefties sometimes, but, you know, uh, some of the situations I've put in this year is i got to use my best stuff, and usually I don't want to get beat on my third pitch, so um, hopefully I get a, uh, a few more clean innings next year and I use my change ups to utilize lefties a little bit better and keep them off base. Well, they, I can tell that the staff overall appreciates your veteran presence and uh, be looking forward to seeing you next year. Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. I eat on the pasta twice just Salerno's Restaurant and Pizzeria at Grand and Racine is the place to go before United Center Pavilion, Bulls, Hawks, Cubs and Sox too. Dine in or carry out with great family recipes including homemade pastas, steaks, seafood, a great fun bar area. Meet people. Have a tremendous time at Salerno's Restaurant and Pizzeria Grand and Racine. You'll find a great variety of foods for you to enjoy at Salerno's. I'm just Perfect pitch auto repair at what 108th and Kedzie is great. Tune-ups, transmissions, AC service, engine repair, tire repair, oil changes. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. They do a great job for me, and they'll do a great job for you. They're quick, and they don't charge an arm and a leg. Perfect pitch auto repair, 108th and Kedzie. Amelia's Bar and Grill, located at 46th and Halstead, is open for lunch and dinner daily. They have private parties and catering, but a very unique mixture of fine dining and Mexican specialties brought to you by the great chef Eusebio Garcia. I just talked to him about the other day, and what a great, great menu they have. Amelia's Bar and Grill, you'll really be amazed. 46th and Halsted, check it out. Tell them Benkowski sent you. Reggie's is a great place with tons of music, interesting people and staff, great food and drink at 21st and State. And amongst the cool things they have, Benkowski Trivia. All shows are now Monday at 6 p.m. Reggie's, 21st and State, a fun place. You gotta check out Beefy's, a neighborhood tradition since 1987. Besides the obvious Italian beef, they got the famous chicken sub, they got double cheese, you can dine in or carry out. It's a very extensive menu. Conveniently located at 58th and Harlem. You're going to like Beefy's. Check it out. We're back in the spotlight. The Chicago baseball season is over. But it's not too late to talk to Robin Ventura. I don't know. We, it's kind of like an exit interview, if you want to call it that. And just kind of the final remarks, the final embalming on the most brutal baseball season in Chicago of my lifetime. We may or may not put a graphic of total losses up. It's kind of gut-wrenching to even look at. But Robin gives his post-mortem to the season and maybe some look-ahead thoughts uh, knowing that 2014 has got to be better. Is it uh, good news, bad news that this is the last weekend of the season? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, again, it's not the season that you wanted, but 
um, you know, they all come in. And at this point, if you can't go to the playoffs, you're ready to, you know, end it and, and get ready for what you're going to do for next year. How many things are you and your staff able to extract from a from this type of season that can be a positive rather than the obvious end, ending result? I don't know what positive. You know, there, there's guys. You know, some guys. I think you start getting younger guys and and see what they can do. I mean, those are are positives that guys get to come up and. You know, and kind of make an impression, and, and you and you go from there. But I wouldn't look at it as though you know there was positives uh, that you take out of it when you have a season like this. Is you know get it over with and you know regroup and get ready for spring training. But it is another year of managing under your belt, and, and you had to have learned some things this year. Uh, anything come out front and center? Uh, but, you know, again, I think you go through this and. Uh, you know, it, it, it's harder than it was last year just because of the way the season went. But, um, you know, again, you make adjustments and, and go from there. I don't know if you just pinpoint one thing that you're, you know, that you learn from it. But, um, you know, again, I think through adversity, you, you, you get better at things. Commissioner, I uh, see they announced he's done it in January. He's accepting that in January 2015. What's he meant to, to baseball during his, during well, his run? He's, his done, he's done a great job. As far as you know, again, when I came into play, he was he was an owner, and then he moved into the commissioner's office. But the game has grown. I think we've seen it, um, you know, globally get bigger, and you know, I think he's he's a big reason for that. He's he's been a, a pretty steady influence on that. Did you know him both as an owner and as commissioner? Uh, yeah, I, I, a little bit, just because of the proximity of us being able to you know play there. I think you know with Jerry's relationship with him, he's he's been around and been able to be around him. And, at different times. Is there a specific, and you talked about a couple there, but is there a specific thing that you think is kind of his calling card during his tenure? Or? Um, I don't know if there's a, a calling card, but again, you know, mixing in the, the wild card of, of just the way the playoffs kind of run now to um, really the global stuff that, that, is, that is taken off, I, I think that's, uh, you know, that's probably stuff for me that, that he's been important for. MLB.com. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, uh, again, the TV and, and everything that's kind of gone with it. Robin, uh, from your own experience uh, being defensively gifted and being a quiet leader in the clubhouse, does Beckham have what it takes going forward to be a leader? Uh, a lot of the guys, managers here, drawn from the ranks of middle infielders and catchers, or defense is the primary uh, job. Say that again? <laughs> a lot of the managers. That was a long say, question. Hey, and no, it went, it went about three different yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot go of, ahead. Uh, lo you know, Beckham being a young veteran, uh, does he show a lot of the characteristics to be a clubhouse leader going okay, forward? Okay, stop there. I'll go with that one Thank first. You. Thank you. Uh, yes, I do. I, you know, again, he's, uh, you know, growing up, I think, um, has always been a, a good player and, and a good leader. He played a little football, and I think that, you know, there's something to that. And we'll have more, Robin, next week, right here on The Spotlight. This week's show has been brought to you by the Lansing Floral Shop. Call for your flowers at 708-474-1212. Huck Finn, a great wide-ranging menu, along with donuts and ice cream. Open 24 hours at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero. Imprint Graphics, leaders in booklet perfect bound saddle stitch, very competitive pricing, 708-396-1010.